Hello, welcome to Burning Questions, May 31st, three bright faces ready to crack into a big show. We'll be focusing on the big meeting at Melton on Saturday night, 10 races on the card, 4.54 p.m. kickoff. Our very first guest, uh, he's dried out a little from last night, Jordan Leadham. Welcome to the show, my friend. Uh, thanks, Toc. Good to be here. How was last night? A bit wet? Uh, well, I got wet yesterday and then uh, I got to Shepparton and got out of my nice dry clothes that I had on to put my wet ones back on and then they decided to call them off on me. So, yeah, it wasn't ideal, but, um, yeah, they got to do what they got to do, I guess. Up to the fundraiser tonight for a, a big uh, book of drives. So good luck to you. Chris Alford doesn't. When was the last time you went to uh, Mildura Pup? Um, yeah, maybe four or five years ago. Yeah. Very cool. Um, how many cups do you want up there? You won one? Nil. Zero. There you go. Something to look forward to going forward. Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. And Abby Sanderson's at the top of my screen. Abby, thanks for coming on. How's life without the brother annoying you at home? Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, house is quieter, probably a bit cleaner too, so it's good. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. When is he home? Uh, June 7th. June 7th, so you got another week of uh, peace and quiet. Good stuff. Thanks for jumping on. Let's get stuck right into it. Pride's Easy Feed Stand is a proud supporter of the harness racing industry with their set recipes and quality ingredients to give the trainer confidence in what they're feeding. So make the switch to Pride's and start getting the result you've been chasing. Zeus has trialled up a treat. So how confident are we that he'll bring the heat? Talking about race two, the Tab Lennon Trotters free for all. Chris Alford takes the drive. We'll hold you to last uh, puppet. Uh, I might start with you, Abby, because Geordie Leadham's got a drive as well. Um, what did you think here? Is it is Alder and Zeus ready to go? He's got the form on the board. He's, he's been all around the world. Do you think he can win first up? Yeah, I think he can. Um, I don't think he'd be there on a Saturday night if he wasn't ready. He's had a couple of trials, so um, I think he's I think he's the one to beat. Um, it's interesting, though, what Sundown's Courage will do. It's got good gate speed and um, it's drawn one and I noticed Rowan Duffy went back on it. Um, but I still think Alderbaran just might be too good from it. But if Sundown's um, Courage leads, I think uh, it, it'll be a bit of a race and then that gives horses like Olavici and one overall a chance too. But I still think um, Alderbaran's just the one to beat. Yeah, <clears throat> me too, Geordie. Uh, Ebony's Avenger. Um, what's your thoughts? A uh, bit of speed inside you, Sundance Courage, Gallic, Lad, Aldebar and Zeus, even Mercenary. So um, while your horse is fast out, it's going to be difficult for you. Um, talk us through your thoughts. Yeah, no, exactly right, Talk. Uh, there's a bit too much speed inside of us to be uh, doing too much early, so we'll just be, yeah, probably swallowing our medicine and just going back and, um, yeah, hoping for a bit of luck. But, um yeah, no, I, I got to see Zeus at Melton Trials on Monday night and, um, yeah, they've, they've got him uh, l looking an absolute treat and um, he had a nice nice solid trial and Pup didn't look like he knocked him around too much and, yeah, I'm sure if he didn't pull up right and well from it, um, Lils wouldn't, yeah, be sending him around on a on a Saturday night. So, yeah, uh, off form, he, he's the one to beat for sure. Yeah, good, I think so. Chris, uh, what are your thoughts? He was... Um... I mean, on the on the vision and on the clock, he was really good the other night. He obviously missed that trial. I think he was going to trial at Bendigo when the lights went out, but um, he's tuned up really nicely. How do you feel about his chances? Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. He, he seems to um, have come back really happy and well. He uh, travelled really well the other night and hit the line good. Um, you know, he still had something left, but he'd want to, you know, go on into a free-for-all this week. Um, but he does seem happy and well, and that's the main thing, and I'm sure... Uh, whatever he does that day, he'll improve. Uh, do you think you'll get the front? Oh, it doesn't really worry me that much. You, you can never guess what they're going to do with Sundon's courage. Sometimes they hold, sometimes they hand up. So um, he, he doesn't have to burn the gate to um, to win the race. So we'll just play it for you. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you know, what your confidence levels are pretty high with him, though. He's ready to go and he's certainly got the class. Yeah, well, just the way he felt, and you know, he, he hasn't got the the the, the good ones like Just Believe and um, Ready Jet, and that there, or Olivici and um, Greg Sauce are going really well. They're going to be hard to beat, but you know, I, I think with with any luck in the run, he'll be very hard to beat. Yeah, good stuff. One more question for you. This is for, this is a head-to-head, Geordie Puppet. I reckon one of the last times you drove Ebony's Avenger, 
Geordie, you're going to get up on the inside and beat Pup. Were you going to win or not? Who was going to win that race? Uh, yeah, thanks for just uh, <laughs> bringing that back up for me, Toc. Oh, I think everyone had just forgotten about that, and now now you've just uh, thrown it back in the works. But, um, yeah, no, it's hard to tell with, with good horses like like Queen Elida, they they saw, they know where the line is and they know how to win. So it, it did feel like I had the momentum coming through. But, yeah, it's just one of those things, um, yeah, that we didn't get to find out, unfortunately. No, oh, Jordy says he's a moral puppy. Would have won that. What do you reckon? Uh, well, results there. It says, it says who won, so we'll just stick with that. <laughs> I don't know what made me think of that. I'm just fiddling through the form. Anyway, good fun. Combining the power of results and horse sectionals, with Sulky App, you now have access to gate speed, swooper, ability and behaviour ratings. Never miss a trainer, driver or gear change again. Sulky App is a form guide revolution. Perfect class is set for a big year, but first up from a wide gate, should his rivals hold no fear. Race one on the card, $10,000 um, jackpot on the first four here too. Projected pool of $50,000. Perfect class. Um, he's odds on. Um, I might start with you, Puppet. What are your thoughts? Um, this is a pretty good field, but he's a pretty good horse. I haven't seen him at the trials either, so I don't really know where he's at. But um, do you think he can win first up, or is he is he a little short in the market, perfect class? Um, I'd say he should be favoured in that race. Um, but I think he's going to have to earn it. I think if um, you bet your Tiger Pike can hold up, which he probably can't now that Jillaby Jack Sparrow's got a run, that would have made it. A little bit interesting because um, they wouldn't have just been giving him the front. But um, saying that, like Yan Bookin was monstrous last week. So, uh, you know, this class, there's no easy races. So if he's 5% off, um, they're going to make it hard for him. Yeah. Um, I was sort of a bit of a wrap for you bet your Tiger Buys chances. Makes it a little trickier now, doesn't it? As you said, with the emergency getting a run. But, um, you know, he might be an each way play, play bet for, for people. You bet your Tiger Pie. Yeah, I think um, it's really going well at the moment. And, uh, you know, if it if it doesn't win it, I'd say it'll probably run a place for sure. Yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, you could get sort of 280 early in the week. Um, Abby, uh, you were down to drive Platinum Stride. There's a big line through his name now. How is he? Yeah, I uh, came out this morning. Um, unfortunately, he just uh, had a bit of a... Uh, injury and track work yesterday. He's all good. He'll be fine. Um, he'll just be off the scene for a little bit, but um, yeah, he's all good. Yeah, not too long, and nothing major. No, nothing major. Okay. Uh, what are your thoughts on this race? You would have probably had a bit of a look at it, given you thought you were racing in it. Yeah, I did. I um, uh, before district attorney come out, I thought that um, perfect class probably um wouldn't would have to do a bit of work and wouldn't find the front. Um, but giving those a couple scratchings and Jillaby Jack Sparrow gets a run, um, it changes the race a bit. And I think in this grade, if Jillaby Jack Sparrow does get the front, it would hand up to perfect class. So, um, yeah, it's an interesting race. Um, but I think Yan Buckingham's a good chance if it gets a little bit of luck. I know it's got a bad draw, but it went huge last start. Yeah. Um... Geordie, uh, you're down to drive Outlaw Man. I imagine when the scratchings came through and you saw that Jillyby Jack Sparrow got a run, you were probably a little bit disappointed given the gate speed that that horse has and you would have probably thought you were some chance of finding the front. Yeah, no, exactly right, Toc. Um, he, yeah, he, his figure form doesn't look great uh, since he's come back, but, yeah, he hasn't had any luck with draws or, or in, in running. So, um yeah, it was a bit of a pain when I, I seen it got a run. But, um, yeah, we'll we'll just see what happens early. We might push forward as well and, uh, yeah, see where we end up. Yeah. Um, thoughts on Yan Buckian? Um, just huge last week, wasn't he? Yeah, no, he, he went uh, monstrous. I, I knew he was, um, yeah, his, his prior runs into that were, were really good. He just had to come wide when they're ripping home in, yeah, 54 halves and it's not easy to do. But, yeah. Um, yeah, he was up outside the speed, and uh, yeah, he he run the race of his life. You would have preferred to be on him, wouldn't you? Oh, uh, yes and no. I, I do have a soft spot for Outlaw Man. He he is one of my favourite horses to drive. So, um, yeah, yes and no. Yeah, well, you, Darren Carroll watches this show, so well done. You you made you had to say that. So, <laughs> um, good stuff. Going to be a great race. Uh, I yeah, interesting race. Uh, the, the scratching changes a lot. Probably a Good place, but you bet your Tiger Pie might be the way I'd play it. Um, 
Logical Staffing Solutions provide labour hire and recruitment services to the transport, warehousing, automotive and manufacturing industries. A logical solution for your staffing needs. Virginia is flying this time in, so can she overcome another handicap to claim a fourth straight win? Uh, I scroll down to race number seven on the card. Chris Alpha drives for Brett Lilly. We'll hold you to last pup. Um, Abby, what were your thoughts on, on this race? Virginia Clow is off the 10 metres. Um, but a good race. There's other chances, though. Yeah, it's a good race, um, and Virginia Clow's going good, so and it's full of confidence, and um, it'd be good for a mare like that. Um, I like Snooze's horse, her fastest Phoenix. I think it's a good chance. Um, yeah, it's been it's been hitting the line well up in up in grade, going through its grades. So. Um, yeah, I think if it gets in front of it and gets a softer run, I think it'll have to do less work than Virginia Clowers. So, um, yeah, I like that one, but obviously you can't rule out um, Puppet's one. It's going good too. Yeah, it's a good point. Festus Phoenix uh, has good gate speed. Uh, there's no, obviously, gate here being a stand, but uh, it's quick away, generally speaking. Geordie, your thoughts on this race? Uh, it's over the 27 60-metre trip, stand start at Melton. Something uh, a little bit different, I guess, for headquarters. Yeah, no, exactly right. Talk, um, yeah, look, Puppet's horse is in really good form. Um, it seems like, yeah, it's safe away from the tape, so that should be no troubles. They're just with the so many horses being off the front line, there might be, um, yeah, a little bit of, of traffic in the way for Pup early. But, um, yeah, what Abby touched on, I think um, Snoozer's horse is back in grade a little bit and is is going, going quite well. So if... Um, he happens to step to the front. Um, I think he'll take some beating. Yep. <clears throat> uh, Pup, your thoughts here? Um, Virginia Clow, she couldn't have done any more, really, this time in. I mean, she, she's a not, she was always a nice horse, but I, I honestly reckon she's taken a step forward this campaign. Uh, yeah, she seems to. I, I didn't drive her last year. Um, she clashed with a few others, but um, she's come back really well, mature, um, seems very strong, and she's got very good speed. Um little bit tricky at the start but um it's sort of only the whole front row then one one in front of us with the other two being out of the draw so we can hopefully uh get away good and get through a few early and see where we posse up but um you know it's a good field um you know i think iron loves flying his run at um in the bendigo cup was super and might sound a little bit stupid uh but i think illamong stardust has got a, a really good chance even off the 30 um it's run off a hundred metre mark at Bendigo was outstanding and I think it was going to win at Maribor pretty easy till it hooked up wheels on the home turn. Yeah, okay. So um yeah, you're not you know, you're probably I would assume Virginia Clowers would be well and truly at the top of the market, three, four dollars. So you're you know, you think you can win, but you you're wary of some other key rivals, I guess. Is that what is that oh, part I of think, the summary? I, I think she could win, but um just these races are always a bit tricky. Um, you know, she's found the front um, in her last two, the Warrigal Cup and, and last time at Melton. So there's, um, you know, no guarantee she's going to find the, the front. So she's going to have to make her luck at some times. But I think she's still good enough to win as long as nothing bad goes wrong. Yeah. She's good from the tapes, is she? Usually steps pretty well. Yeah. Good stuff. Looking forward to that race. Race seven on the card, uh, two minutes past eight. Uh, the next question refers to race eight, the final leg of the quaddy. He's won four of six to start his career. So will Tokyo again instigate the cheer? Um, Michael, straight back to you here. Chris, um, you haven't got a drive in this one. I, I think it's a good race. I haven't obviously seen markets yet. Kiang Tokyo unbeaten this time in, won the Tontine at Tarang last time out, but um, some speed inside him uh, and some good horses off the back. Um, what are your thoughts here on race eight? Uh, yeah, it looks to be a very progressive horse, Kiang Tokyo. And as you said, he's won his last uh, three in a row and, and won the Tontine in, I think, track record time for Terang, which is, you know, a good push. But, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that most of these horses in this race would have won the, won the uh, Tontine if, if they found the front. It's... You know, you look at some of them, here's a 68, and then you get up to, you know, Terry and Vanquish Stride, 87 and 93, and even old Cast No Shadows, 103. So he, he's way up in grade. So it's going to be interesting. He, he, he's probably going to be good enough to take the step, but uh, it'll be good to watch. 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, we might go to you, Geordie. I'll leave you to last, Abby, because um, you're not going to be involved in the early speed battle. But Geordie might stir me up. Just looking at the Sulky app thing here, uh, Geordie. It looks like um, you know you've got a, a you know a chance to lead. You've obviously got the stable mate, Young Gifted in black inside you. Uh, Climenus can get out. Um, did you, are you going to press forward? Do you think? Have you chatted to uh, the team there, Anthony Button, Sonia Smith? Uh, I haven't, uh, yes, spoken to them about it yet, Toc, but, um, yeah, um, I, I think we can get across the two inside us, um, early and then, yeah, just, just depends sort of the, uh, who the first one there is, but, um, yeah, without, out talking to Ant and Son, obviously that, that was my, my point of view, but yeah, they, they might think different, but, um, yeah, that, that's just what I thought. Yeah. Do, do you think Keyang Tokyo is the, your biggest danger or... You know, given what Pup said, you know, ratings, what is he, uh, 70, 68, um, compared to some of these other seasoned horses, in particular one that Abby drives, uh, you know, is he, what do you think? Is it Keang Tokyo's race or or is it much more even than that? Uh, no, I think it's uh, a, a lot wider open than just, uh, yeah, Keang Tokyo. Like you said, uh, Abby's horse is probably way back down in grade and has, has been flying of recent times. So, yeah, I... I don't think um, even if Tokyo does happen to just find the front um, and even if he does get sort of that soft trip, I, I still think those horses uh, are more than capable of yeah coming from back in the field and um, hitting the line hard. Are you a sneaky chance at big odds? Um, yeah, that's all. Depending, if I can get across to the fence and, um, yeah, be, be lead us back, I, I don't see why I can't be uh, figuring in the finish. Yeah, good stuff. Abby, uh, Vanquish Stride. Uh, before we chat about this one, how do you tell the difference between Vanquish, Perfect, and Platinum? I can't still after all these years. Yeah, uh, they're all, obviously I can tell the difference with them because <laughs> I work with them at home. But um, yeah, they're all a bit probably Platinum's. Platinum's easier to know. He's got a big Roman nose, so you can't really miss him. And then yeah, it's easy to get confused between Vanquish and Perfect. They're a bit similar. <laughs> we all sort of race in, you know, they're at similar grade. Um, Vanquish stride here Saturday night. What are your thoughts? Obviously, you want a bit to happen up front, but you've got to be a winning chance, don't you? Yeah, I think so. Obviously, he's got a bad draw, but that's the story of his life. He has bad draws most times. Um, and then he gets when he does draw one in a free-for-all, he certainly doesn't disgrace himself. He He's always in the top three um, when he gets a good draw against good horses. So this is a drop back in grade, but Keang Tokyo is flying um, and it's a progressing horse. I think I think um, it'll be interesting to see what it does because it's a bit up in grade. Um, yeah, I think Ant's horse, I don't know, just him, might hold or I'm not sure, um, but a bit of speed will be good and Vanquish will be right there. Yeah, good stuff. Um, just a quick one before we go to best bets, Chris and Geordie, um, of your other drives, we mightn't have mentioned. Is is there anything else worth mentioning there? I might have covered all yours here, Geordie, have we? Oh, Lottie Moon, any chance? Race five? Um, yeah, she she went good uh, in the Tom team uh, behind King Tokyo. Like we we uh, got got beat a not a long way, but um, yeah, uh, Bo and AJ were over the moon with her run, considering they. They said she was going to need it. Um, they they hadn't yeah raced or trialed in a long time, so yeah they weren't expecting a, a, yeah great performance. But uh, yeah, I, I don't see why if we get the right trip, she won't be there in the finish. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, Pup uh, touched on Aldebaran Zeus, Rock and Roll Waller. Your thoughts outside back row race three? Uh yeah, he's racing really well. Um, sort of race sort of suits him. With the way the rating system is, um, you know, being a non-metro winner's race, uh, he comes in as a 73 and number one is like a 46 and they gradually progress up. But um, him, Duke's Choice and Layden are all racing really well and we've got the worst three draws, but I think they're the three to beat. Yep. Ty Valley Amanda, uh, Barrier 8, race four. Uh, she was probably a bit disappointing um, last run. I thought she was going to be right in it and just tired so she might take it another couple of runs. Elder Baron Brook, uh one of your horses, race six. Yeah, she was going to be my uh best bet each way. Good stuff. We'll, we'll get to that one. And uh we've touched on a silent reverie emergency for Joe Vasolo, race nine. Um, yeah she went well last start, just ran out of puff bum. But the draw suits her if she happens to get a run she'll lead and uh she'll give him something to chase for a long way. 
Good stuff. Well, best bets time. Thanks to Sharps Bakery there in Birchip, the best vanilla slices going around. Don't know if I've had you on, Abby. Have you tried the vanilla slice from uh, from Sharps? Yeah, you had me on the um the other I week did. when Dangerous was on, and the Sharps people they seen me that I didn't that I hadn't tried it. And next time Paul came down to the farm, he, they bought they sent me some home, so I can say I've tried it now. It's pretty good. <laughs> That's good. Cool. Well, you better say it was good. Oh yeah, it's very good. I recommend. <laughs> All right. Well, I still haven't tried it. So, um, uh, who'd you say brought it down here? Paul Lowry. Paul Lowry, yeah, from Virtue. They um, watched the burning questions, and they weren't happy that I hadn't tried it yet. So, well, I know Paul. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know Paul well. Paul, you know where I live, near the, not too far away from the, uh, the trotting track, yeah, here in Ballarat. So, um, feel free to send a box down to me. Uh, Abby, best bet for you at Melton on Saturday night. Um, I'm going to go race five, number 10, our mate Manco, um, each way, not to win, each way. Um, I think he's, uh, it's a good chance. He's second up. He's had a couple of trials and uh, had a good run last week. He's got a little bit tired the last 50, but, um, yeah, I think he'll be fit enough. And besides Gorn, I think it's a pretty winnable race for him. So he'll just need a bit of luck from the bad draw. But, yeah, I like his chances each way. Each way. Okay. Sorry, I meant to ask you about your I, I didn't realise you were you were driving him. Um good stuff. Our mate Menko, race five, number ten each way for Abby Sanderson. Jordan Leadham, best bet, please. Uh, I'm gonna go with Moonwalker. Where's that Bob up? Let me search that one up. There it is. Uh, race four, number one. Okay, good stuff. You could push there. Uh Kate takes the drive, put the pressure on the bosses. I like yep. it. Uh, That's exactly Chris, right. That's exactly right. Yeah, uh, and Chris, uh, reiterate your best bet, please. Uh yeah, I've got I've got two. Um, Aldebaran Brook each way in. Um, I'm not sure what race. Maybe race six. Race six, number three. Yep. Yeah, and uh, Jordan lead him in the sprint tonight because he's got his spikes <laughs> on, ready to go. <laughs> um, yeah. What's uh, that? Yeah. What are your thoughts, Jordy? Give us an. We've read the story online. Uh, Alex Ashwood declaring himself. Liam Mulder playing a bit of a. You know, um, trying to fly under the radar. Are you a genuine hope tonight off the – I think you're off the back, Mark. Yeah, no, I think I've been stitched up there. I've been given the big handicap. Uh, but, look, I'll be happy if I don't break down. I, I couldn't tell you the last time I've got up and gone for a little a little 100-metre dash. So if I, if I come uh, through the race with no uh, hiccups, I'll be more than happy. Um, good stuff. Looking forward to it. I think it's just after 9 p.m. So jump on. To, I think they're going to be able to broadcast it on Trots Vision. So for those that want to tune in and watch the uh, Sprinters Kolkata Cup, do so at trotsvision.com.au. Jordy, you've got 11 drives tonight. Just before we uh, say goodbye, what's the best? It's certainly not Major Meister against the champ. Where's the god? I know that much. Well, I think you're underrating the Major Meister a little bit, Toc. <laughs> um, yeah, but... uh, probably. Uh, no, I got a yeah, probably the best book of drives I've had up here for a while tonight. But um, I, I think the one right before the the Sprinters Cup, uh, Branson, I think he's he's probably my best bet. I think I think we can lead, and I don't see there's much pressure in the race, and I think we can get an easy time of it in front, and uh, hopefully be too good in the end. Good stuff. Good luck. Yeah, you might be indisposed after that. You might. Have, we might have to get some replacement drivers for the the back end of the card. Uh, actually, that one bit of advice, Chris. You are a, uh, a stall trainer driver gift winner uh, over yep. Easter at the at the mighty uh, Stall Harness Racing Club. Any advice for the for the guys running in the race tonight? Uh, yeah, just try and crimp up on your handicap a bit and get a bit of a head start <laughs> if you can. <laughs> Was one of the genuine rorts that don't know how. You, yeah. Uh, anyway, you limped over the last uh, twenty meters and got the cash. Thanks, Abby Sanderson. Much appreciated. Chris Alford and Jordan Leadham. Really appreciate all your insights. Looking forward to the big meeting at Melton on Saturday night. That's been Burning Questions May thirty one. We'll be back next Friday with another edition.